What's up you guys, FSC Speed Shop. We're leaving my parents' house here and we're getting ready to get in the car and head home. But there's a couple places I wanna stop and see and show you guys on our way home. A Little bit of Festjack family history. We weren't always here in New Jersey. In fact, before the name came from the Ukraine and Poland, it actually stopped for a while in Pennsylvania. Let's go ahead and get the trunk closed and get on down the line. We're in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania now in a section known as Plains. My father knew this neighborhood as Miner's Mills. You see the railroad sign behind me, there's family history has to do with that. One of these days I want to do a video of my father, have him telling me some stories. And meanwhile I go to the places where, he, where these stories had happened. That's in a future video, but for now, we're gonna go walk around. I'm gonna show you where the house was, where my father was raised when he was little. He wasn't born here, he was born in, I forget the hospital, but he was brought here when he was a baby and he moved out, he was around seven years old when he moved out of this neighborhood and came to Jersey. Obviously from that point met my mother as an, you know, after high school and the rest is history. But right here is where the Festjack story begins, at least as far as I know it. Forgive my interruption, but usually when I film a video, I know more about it before I film. This particular video, however, I did more research after I made it all the way home, long after I filmed it. Now I had been out to this area exploring about 20 years ago. My father and I went there and we walked down the path to look at the old mine. At the time we couldn't find it, but we did find this building here. These pictures were taken about the same time frame my father and I were out there last. But at that time, I never was able to find the actual entrance to the mine shaft. Now, after that trip, I went back maybe about a year later and I did find the actual entrance to the shaft. I haven't been back since and it's been over 20 years. Now, many things have changed and he built more homes around the area. However, my father's old house is still there. One of the many rail lines are still there along with the shoe store which building was there back in 1951 when they blew up a union executive for the mines this area was owned by hudson coal company and this particular place that i'm going to show you here was the hudson coal company pine ridge colliery now colliery is a fancy word for coal mine but i had no idea all my life until i found these pictures the extent of the size of the complex that this colliery once was what was now a bunch of woods and a handful of bricks was a huge sprawling breaker. Also included in this monster colliery was a standard gauge rail line for hauling the coal out and a narrow gauge rail line for hauling coal to the breaker from other locations throughout the Pine Ridge region. Now from the best of my knowledge, my grandfather worked right here at what they call Pine Ridge Shaft 1. Also real close to shaft number 1 is slope number 1. Now, before I even knew there was a slope, I didn't know there was an entrance to look for. However, I did find shaft number one and some remnants of a maintenance building, which later on I found was identified as a narrow gauge rail car repair facility, hence why it looks a little bit like a garage. This information was found by old mining maps that I found. With these maps, I was able to determine the name of the shaft and find these pictures and other information regarding the mine. Immediately after filming, my son found an article online that was posted pretty recent. It was one of those a look back in time articles that a local paper had done. They had discussed the bombing of the mine union official right in front of what is now a shoe store. That building still remains. Funny thing is my father remembers when that bomb went off. That's how I was able to determine it was approximately 1951. With that, let's get on with the video. If you could picture it, the year was 1946. My father was born James Joseph Festjack and then brought home here. This house right here, it has a different number, but this is South Cleveland Street in Plains, Miners Mills, PA. My father was on this side of the house and later in 1952, they moved out. There's a rail line that goes behind that house where my father used to play. There's a story with an old lantern. Uh, one of those trees I'm sure is huge now. That's where he took the lantern and stole it and caused a big whole scene. But either way, I figure I'd take a, let you see 
Here's where my father grew up as a young child. Well, back in the day, my grandfather, there's a long story about building a, about building a 49 Dodge back here. I don't believe, that, well, that garage obviously wasn't there. There might have been something else. But when they left out of here in 52, they did it in a 49 Dodge and a 36 Chevy. And they did it in 52. The Dodge had a bent frame and it went down the road a little crooked. But my father, my grandfather got it for pretty much next to nothing. And they fixed it up right back here. I think it was in a pretty major crash and they got it for very cheap. Bear in mind, the Festjacks were messing around with cars long before I was around. I mean, I make the joke that the Festjacks were doing cars back when the first car was probably invented. Nonetheless, in 52, they fixed up the car, packed it up, and went to Jersey. In fact, the coal mines were doing so poorly at that time. Bear in mind, in the 50s, the steam trains were transitioning over to diesel, and homes were starting to burn oil instead of coal. So coal wasn't such a big thing. The mines cut them down to like one or two days a week and it wasn't making any real money in the end the decision was my grandfather would leave here in the in the dodge go to new jersey and when he got to jersey stay in a rooming house get a job and then eventually come back for the family and move them out there as well you got to bear in mind in the 50s there was no welfare no nothing you went to the church for charity or you starved so in 52 when he went out to jersey he had enough money to go to jersey he either found a job or he didn't make it back. They left out of here in hard times, and in the end, they did really good for themselves. But this is where it all started. But back before they left, my grandfather would walk down this street, and under a bridge, we're gonna walk over, and then up to the mine. The mines were literally just over them trees. My father would tell me that, depending on where he stood on the road, you could see the crane that lifted the elevator up and down out of the coal shaft. Miners went in, coal came out, then the miners came out. That was grandpa's life. My father tells a story back in the day where that white building is beyond Matthew. He was a kid, he remembers it. There was a big explosion. According to my father, there was a car that was blown up right in front of that white building, parked on this side of the street. It shook the house and they thought it was a mine that had gone up. In reality, there was a car that was parked over here. The year was approximately 1951, maybe 1950. But my dad to this day remembers the explosion. We've looked online, I haven't able, we've looked online and not been able to find anything about it. Surely maybe there's old newspaper clippings. So if any of you guys know anything about it or have any information, I'd love to, I'd love to know more. Send me some information if you can. Let me know what you have to say, what you think. But now, let's get walking down memory lane. No, I lost it. Can't keep it all. No, you can't. As I look towards the back of the old house, I often wonder where my father was when he was looking at the lantern. I'm assuming the porch he hit it was this porch back here. But where back here in these trees was the lantern hidden? Was it this direction? Was it over here? Bear in mind where I'm standing right now was where there was a second leg of track. That track goes that way, but there were two back in the day. Right where I'm walking was a second track. You'll see where it was when we get to the bridge. But you'll see the berm is wider than the track. The track doesn't need this wide of a berm. There were two. Does it look like these tracks are used? Well, look at the rail. Oh, yeah. You see the center of the rail is a little shiny? Yeah. Probably don't use it a lot but you can see it's been used fairly recently. In fact, in fact, it's been used after the last rain. The top of the rail would be completely rusty if it was. That so it's used recently. fairly frequently. There's the house and it comes under here. My grandfather would walk down the street and underneath this bridge and up that way was a dirt road that we took my Suburban up once. Back then you couldn't get up there, but I was like 16, 17 years old. 
and I'm 42 now. Stay over here, that's rotten. So watch your step. You see the second bridge where the train track used to be. Now we'll find out together, but I'm pretty sure the tracks that were on this side service the mine, which is obviously no longer there. And this is just part of the main line or whatever spur it goes to, who knows what it does, still an active track. Let's go down and see. I've never walked here before. It's all fun and games so you break your legs. I'm good. I'm young. I'll go back. Are you a caterpillar? Yes. How badass would it be if a train actually came here? Oh, Notice this here. Was it a switch? Was it some kind of switch track signal? Most likely signal for the railroad right there. Those concrete pieces. Yeah. Here's another piece of, I'm gonna say history, just to show what was here. This concrete block. I don't know what that did, but it ain't there for nothing. Matter of fact, Matt, look how that grades, where that block is. That's kind of why I want to go up there. Yeah. That's a block blocking the road. Look at that, how it grades down. I think we just answered my question. The train came over that bridge and started up that gradient up to where Matt stands right there. Because look at the berm. Look at the berm here. It's not that wide to our right any it's not that wide to our left. So this side it got narrow again, didn't it? So that's the whole line. I think you're standing on the old spur that used to load Grandpa John's coal. It's a pretty steep grade, but it's a spur. Matter of fact, there's an old railroad tie right there. Granted, that's not unheard of being this close to tracks. Where? Right in front of you. The big block right there? Yeah, see there's a block and there's a railroad tie underneath it on this side visible. Dan, if you need help, I can help. Matt just hollered, said on top of that ridge, not that not that gradient that I saw, but at the top of the ridge is very flat. He thinks that's where the tracks were. That's the hardest part right there, babe. Coming through that, after that it's all open. We'll look at the old thorned holly bush right here. I think we woke up every neighborhood dog. Shut up, Shut up. dog. You're worse than the dog, Matt. Exactly. Deer corn. Right, God knows what that block was. There was no track here. It's too narrow, like Matt says. But Matt thinks the track was up here somewhere. Look at where the gravel is. Up here. Look how flat it is. Yeah, it's a lot of bush to walk through. Great. You'll be fine. Man. 
step on the stone. Down, I'll help you down. Me and Dad will clear a path by stepping on it. There's already a path cleared. Oh yeah, good point. This isn't bad here. It's not bad once you get through, Jen. No, that's a that's pretty muddy and yucked up. When Dad brought me here when I was a teenager, there was a brick building you could see back here. It's long torn down. Well, that's pleasant or morbid. <laughs> oh, that is. That is getting a picture so I can put that in cursed images. This might be the road me and Grandpa walked down all them years ago. Need help? No. Okay. Back in the day when I was here, when I was your age or older, the actual shaft was covered by metal expanded grate. Okay. And over that was red rock, like 2B size rock. That's what was there. There was a red building, which is gone, and somewhere was a circular coal pile. I think I found it. Maybe, maybe not. But. I'll come around this way. This is the coal pile, I think. It always looked like a circular coal pile from the footage, from the Google images of, or actually MapQuest back in those days. Where? You're standing on it. Look at the rock now. See, it's all rock, like mm -hmm. from out of the mine. There was a spot where there's so a lot of rocks. Not much coal, but rock. Again, we're talking before you were born. I was here last. Last time I was here, is, you weren't even born yet. Oh, never mind. Well, no. Here we are. It comes up a little. Oh, yeah. We and found it. Red, That's it right here. And the red rock. See the red rock? And the metal. And the steel. To put a lot over it. And it's no more, but... They dumped a lot of dirt on this. Ooh. Found it, baby. Go get Jen. But well, we found it. This is the this is the shaft. We're now standing right on it. Last time I was here, the roads were here, but these houses right here were not. Baby. This is it right here. Only for shovels. 
How are you gonna lift the metal grate? Just so we can look down. You have no idea how dangerous old coal mines are. Probably extremely dangerous. There's no ventilation, no pumping, no all, it's all flooded, huh. you know? It'd be cool to explore one day, but it cost a fortune to do it, you know? It's just old history. <laughs> look over here, babe. Right there, you see that steel grate? Yeah. You're standing on it. That steel grate was set over the hole. This is the hole, this big upper pile. They put the grate down, put stuff on the grate, and then put this big pile of red rock on it. That crane my father saw with the pulley on top, the elevator, was right over all of this. You're standing on the hole that your great-grandfather used to go down to mine for coal long before you, long before me. In the 40s and early 50s, on this spot, he came in and out of the ground to earn a living. How does that make you feel? I don't really know. In truth, I wish I knew the guy. He died in 1976. I was born in 1977. My grandmother passed away in 75. I never knew them. I knew my mother's side of the family. I had two grandparents from her side. But the Festjacks, I never knew. In some ways, I come here maybe to relive a little bit of what I never knew. To try to pay respects to a man that I never knew for the labor that he put in and the fact that he busted his ass to make sure that my father and his brother were taken care of and well. He took care of his wife, my grandmother. He did a damn good job of it. And the man that's my father, the many people in the videos you see, the stories my father tells, the joyfulness of my dad and so on, the family. At one point it started right here. Underneath me is a hole that goes, I don't know how deep. Hudson Coal Company probably still owns this for all I know, if they're even still in business. But considering the things I do, how hard I work, and a little tribute to my grandfather. We're gonna walk back down this direction, it's more open, and see if we can find what's left of that brick building. The brick building should have been right in that tree line. Those young trees should have been over there if I remember right. Now as far as the railroad and where it's, what spur and how it fed, I don't know, but considering it wasn't that far of a walk from that railroad back there to here, and all of this is fairly young, there's no old growth trees back there, it's all new. We're talking back from 50s, we're talking almost 70 years ago, and none of this is old. So, God knows what was here. I'd love to see old pictures if you could find archives. If anybody knows where I can find information on this shaft or anything pertaining to Hudson Coal Company, please share in the comments below where I can find information like such. I'd love to know. Little family history stuff, right? I'd love to know it. But there's nothing old here. So this was all open and industrial back in its day. For all I know, this road was the spur. The rail spur going that direction. Could be. Grandpa left out of here 70 years ago. Beginning? Matt, that wasn't the dirt that your grandpa was here when your grandpa was here. Still around the area <laughs> and above the mine shaft of basically my beginning. That's part of it. It's a part of the history. This history, you got to bear in mind, Matthew, there is history that goes beyond when they were here. Remember, Festjex, that's an old brick. Yeah, I know. Probably has, from that building. It has words on it. What's it say? I can't really, it's uh, something. Wouldn't be surprised if it's Sayer and Fisher. I think that's a K. That's it, that's definitely a K, an O, o and a, a v. v. and an E. So Cove something, something Cove. Yep. K-O-V-E. If you want to carry that back. That's what I was planning on doing. Oh. Put in one of the bags that I have from the- Sayer and Fisher is where your other grandfather was in the area of Sayreville, New Jersey. That's why Sayreville is named that, after Sayer and Fisher Brick Company. Is this cold? No. Shale. That might be coal. Or coal that ain't quite good enough. I don't know that much about rock. Breaking on that hard one right there. Not coal. Coal is brittle. Coal is very brittle. 
Since they spent a fortune to get the coal out of the ground around here, I don't think they left much of it. But it's shale, and I bet all that stuff came from down that hole. That might be coal. That might be coal. That might be coal. Hold on. I got a handy brick. Don't break the brick. Yeah, I know. I don't think it's coal. It's not shiny enough. But it's loose shale. Some kind of shale, slag, garbage. Stuff the coal company would have wanted nothing to do with. Good enough for me to keep. It's a souvenir. Exactly. What's this over here? Of our name beginning. More bricks from the old building. Concrete it together still. Okay. Some kind of siding. That's oof, I'm assuming. Could be. A new way. Oh wait, this is, has words. Dickover, D-I-C-K-O-V-E-R. Guess this the company that made the bricks. Dickover Brick Company. Look that, that up online, you might find it. You can replace the one. Yeah, that's ditch that one and keep the good one. Yeah, the one has words. We'll look that stuff up online and see if we can find it with Dick Over Brick Company. It's kind of interesting. But the building was over this direction. We think we found remnants of it. That's shiny. That's shiny. I think that's coal. Yeah, that's some coal, but it's very thin. See, it's mm -hmm. still hooked to that rock. I have a nice chunk of coal sitting on my, in my bedroom on my shelf. Yeah, well, coal's not that hard to get. Well, it's easy to get once you already get it out of the ground. This is hard to get because this is sentimental stuff. Well, bear in mind, in, in that day, it was very difficult to do mining. Today, it's easy. done much more easier and safer for the men. It's over here. So the path that we were originally going on, this leads to that mud. Could be. Look at over here by, in that tree. That could be the old, that could be the foundations of the house. The building, yeah. There it is. Yep. That's exactly what that is. Wait, wait, wait. You can go on, there, ain't you? Huh? But look at the middle. You think this is foundation for a building? Or for a. Uh, this is okay. is this concrete? This is concrete we're standing on. This could be the foundation. Yeah, this is the building. Right? This is the building. See the piece of the wall right there? Looks like the wall that fell. Just like a shop. All the brick pile. Basically, I'm assuming we just remove the innards and knock it all down. Well, brick buildings get brittle as they get older, so it's safer to bulldoze them. Look at all the old railroad ties right here. Yeah. Some kind of wooden structure. It's a structure. I think it was just real old railroad ties stacked together. Oh, that could be from the old, uh, the second railroad track that they removed and put them all there. Could be. I just see a pile of old rail timber. I don't see any, any iron in any of that. Oh, this hunk of metal is right here. Sheet metal, something. <gasps> I'm keeping this. It's a birdhouse. Oh, stop it. Nah, that's probably, they probably had it up in the in the building. Do you really think that piece is 70 years old? Could be. I bet that's 20 year old garbage. They got dumped. <laughs> I like watching Matthew explore. He's very interested in all this you want to use tire dad no i got plenty of those okay. he's very inquisitive it's just good and he's sentimental and 
It's family history. I'm kind of bored and want to go back, but I'll film him walking around a little. I find it interesting and fun to watch my son. I think I found a better piece of coal. It could be, I don't know how. There's different grades, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's not smushed enough. You know, ge geology hasn't done its job to make, oh, that's pretty soft, that might be. Keep it anyway if you want. That's pocket, what I'm doing. Pocket size. Exactly. Keep that dick over, Brick. But yeah, the building was right here and this is the foundation of it. I have no idea what was here. At first you think you're standing on steel, but it's cracked. But it's colored like steel. It would be rusty. But you see the cracks? It's concrete of some kind. It's not steel. It goes out a good ways. Like this is the back of the building here. Hey Matt, stand over here. This is the back, I'm trying to get a rough size of the building. The building started here and walk that way till you're at the end of the concrete. The con this is cleared up for some reason, but over there underneath all that brush is still the concrete. Right here is where the wall ends and fell over. It's about 60, 70 feet long. Come walking. This stuff is brittle enough that the one I have, I could snap it in my hands. Yeah, but I don't know if, I don't, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's brittle, but it doesn't mean it's cold, but it's kind of shiny like coal. Yeah, here's where the, looks like the wall, where some more wall bricks were. Under your feet right here. Yeah, from here to about there. And about 70 feet long, or deep. The garage doors were facing us, like walking in, like if we were to walk forward, we'd walk into the garage doors. I remember how that laid. Well, here, look, see. Here's the foundation, see? Yeah. Actually ends right here. Right here, where she ends. So right here would have been a door. Yeah, right here. Yep. Actually, it keeps going this way. Stops right here. Yeah, that's the end. That's probably where the garage door goes, and that would be, yeah. a, that would be a regular door. That'd be a regular mm -hmm. door, this would be a garage door. I wonder what that gantry crane looked like to lift the elevator in and out of that hole back there, over where I'm shining is where we were, where the hole actually is. I wonder where the winch cable was. My father used to say he remembers it kind of like a triangle shaped, like it went up and then down to a winch perhaps. But we're talking memories of a seven year old who is now 73. Memories fade over history, doesn't it? Indeed it does. Well, this was the old road, so let's try to, if we can, let's see if we can walk back the way Grandpa used to walk to and from work. This way is the direction of the car. The 
original road has that Chevy pickup back there. And he's kind of built it up like that's his property, for all I know it may be. That's the way my grandfather used to walk to work, or from work in this direction, if we walk towards that Chevy. We're not going to walk that way, we're going to walk the street around it. We'll come at it from the roadside though, take a look. So we'll retrace as much steps as possible without traipsing on someone else's prop. The old siren right there. We're on the other side of that old Chevy truck where this dirt road used to lead to the old mine. Grandpa used to walk down this way, get to the, get back home. Just things I wonder. I wonder if Grandpa didn't walk down the track and come down here or if he stayed on the road and walked that way makes you wonder hard telling careful up there Matt that's all rotten yep. look at the walkway it's like nothing left of it And that concludes my grandfather's long walk home from the mines. May he rest in peace.